The fashion industry, not as we know it today, has been around for a long time. Since the beginning of mankind, clothing has had a lot of different purposes. From covering naked bodies and keeping them warm, to making a statement and expressing oneself. Nowadays, fashion has become an important element in our daily life that we are constantly seeing ads and sales trying to convince us to buy more and more even though we don't need it. Fashion retailers like Zara, H&M, Hugo Boss, Ralph Lauren make use of the fashion industry. However, it is controversial and has been involved in so many different scandals. Capitalism might win in this battle. What about digging into the whole industry today? So before going on your next shopping spree, how about you take a look at this video to learn more about the dirty secrets of the fashion industry. In 2004, activists protested against the clothing company Ralph Lauren in the streets of New York for its refusal to sign an international agreement that seeks to improve conditions for factory workers in Bangladesh, which is one of the world's biggest clothing suppliers. For the Accord on Fire and Building Safety in Bangladesh, a worker safety pact that has gotten international attention since a factory complex collapsed in 2003, killing more than 1,100 people. The Rana Plaza disaster, which killed more than 1,100 people, making it the largest industrial disaster in manufacturing history, made headlines around the world. And while it was by far the most notorious industrial disaster in Bangladesh, it was by no means the first. The tragedy helped focus global attention on the plight of the world's garment workers, who often face abuse and unsafe conditions while earning rock bottom wages. There were no holidays, no salary on time, maternity issues weren't addressed. Ralph Lauren said in a statement that less than 3% of the company's clothes are made in Bangladesh, where it does business with 15 factories. Ralph Lauren does offer a citizenship report which includes codes of conduct and ethical guidelines for its suppliers. But the garment workers have barely seen any implementation. Throughout the COVID-19 lockdown, the conditions of garment workers from developing countries became hazardous. Mosaic Brands from Australia, which owns a host of retailers, including Noni B, Rivers, Rockmans and Millers, delayed payments for eight months in lockdown. Ralph Lauren, the New York-based fashion house, which has 530 stores globally, with about 24,900 employees. Recently, a BBC report is shedding light on exploitation allegations by Indian workers. Low wages and weak labor laws have made India an attractive place for foreign brands looking to outsource work. Unions are rare and virtually absent in the private sector, making informal and contract workers especially vulnerable. India is the world's second largest manufacturer and exporter of garments after China. India's garment makers directly employ about 12.9 million people in factories and millions more outside, including their own homes. According to the report, several workers in a poverty-stricken region of southern India spoke of routine abuse working for a supplier. A woman said supervisors sometimes force workers to stay overnight to finish work, sleep on the factory floor, and then restart a full day on just two hours of sleep. The climate of fear they described, including shouting and threatening, who said they will fire workers who do not stay for overtime without providing any notice. Several other retailers were implicated in the expose, including UK chains, Tesco and Marks and Spencer. Workers supplying those establishments said they don't get bathroom breaks and barely have time to drink water or eat lunch. They also have told the BBC that forced overtime Verbal abuse and poor working conditions are routine at the factories. Another worker at Rare Florence suppliers told the BBC that they treat them like slaves. According to the report, the claims seem to violate India's Factories Act, which state that no worker should exceed more than 48 hours a week or 60 hours with overtime. Workers should also not be made to work for over 9 hours a day. Over the last 15 years, the WRC, among other organizations, have exposed dozens of cases of large-scale severance theft at garments factories. Virtually every major apparel brand and retailer has been implicated. Across all factories, it was estimated that 160,000 workers have lost 171.5 million to severance theft during lockdown. These historical violations, like those occurring in the midst of pandemic, 
represent the failure of brands and retailers to uphold their own labor standards. Every significant apparel brand and retailer has a self-generated labor rights code of conduct. Virtually without exception, these codes commit the brand to ensure that supplier factories pay all legally mandated wages and benefits. Despite this, brands and retailers chronically fail to ensure that severance is paid with catastrophic consequences for workers. Brands and retailers themselves acknowledge the high incidence of severance theft in their supply chains. For example, in 2012, Adidas, facing criticism over non-payment at a large garment factory in Indonesia, defended itself by pointing out that non-payment of severance is also so common in this industry. Myanmar's biggest market, CMP, and other factories reduced working hours and cut jobs during COVID-19, while some have permanently or temporarily shut down. Women working in Bangladesh garment industry has been heavily affected by COVID pandemic and associated disruptions in the sector. Bangladeshi workers employed in the ready-made garment industry, which also supplies clothing and fashion products to multinational companies across the global north, including many well-known UK high street brands. A number of development agencies and international advocacy NGOs found that some employers refused to let workers return after lockdown. Most who did return said they had been forced to sign new contracts, losing access to benefits and protections they had previously accrued. The research also found an increase in intimidation and threats, physical and sexual violence, and restriction of movement. Legal protection for women workers, meanwhile, is limited, as are grievances mechanisms in place. Those which do exist were said to be often disregarded with impunity by many factory owners and managers. The majority of workers in the RMG industry in Bangladesh are women who are young, poorly educated and from rural areas with alternative employment options. They are especially vulnerable to exploitations. It's been four decades since Bangladesh made apparels made their way into the global market. Today, the Made in Bangladesh tag is a name of trust in the global fashion market. Apparels made in Bangladesh are the first choice of leading global brands whose worldwide network make those available in the shelves of dress shops and cities across the continents. Bangladesh has grown into an apparel powerhouse with factories producing clothing for the likes of Tommy Hilfiger, Gap, Calvin Klein, H&M, Giorgio Armani, Ralph Lauren and Hugo Boss. Many global retailers have opened sourcing operations in Dhaka. Luxury sales have increased rapidly throughout the past decade with global sales reaching 281 billion euros to $316 billion in 2020. While sales took a hit in 2020, they have already rebounded and it's not hard to see why they are so profitable. It's easy to make money when you can sell pieces of clothing for $5,000 each. While luxury brands build the perception of having the highest quality of clothing, for all practical purposes, they are really not any different than the clothes you would buy at a Target or Gap. At the end of a day, $5,000 Louis Vuitton bag is not really a rocket science. These brands are highly sophisticated marketing machines that employ every psychological trick in the book to make you believe the product they're selling is worth $10,000. That's how they earn profit by leaving you poor. Exploitation in the fashion industry is nothing new. On the heels of the industrial revolution, sweatshops with unsafe and unfair working conditions surfaced in the late 1800s. Respect for garment workers should be included under the sustainable fashion umbrella. The term ethical fashion is often employed to refer specifically to the treatment of people within the industry. A quick Google search for ethical fashion will reveal countless conversations across workspace safety, wage theft, working hours, and fair play. In a globalized industry, there is much to explore within each facade of the topic. But for the average shopper, a simpler way to think of it is boiling down the questions down to compensation and safety. Are people being paid fairly? And is their working environment safe and voluntary, there are some basic questions to ask. In this 21st century, ensuring these things could save our fashion industry in the long run. Ensuring RMG factories are safe, strengthening their labor inspectorate, strengthening the fire service, enhancing occupation health and safety, compensation for Rana Plaza survivors, and establishment of an employment injury social protection scheme, and last but not least, coordination and collaboration.